All right, we're going here. Okay. All right. Um, next video, video. This would be video number four. Um, do a 15 minutes recap. Then we're going to another 15 minutes into the uh, next topic, next subject. Um, recap. Um, why whole life insurance is great for you if you have a million dollars that you need to put away and keep out of the hands of uh, the IRS uh, taxes on it. Um, like, I, like I said in the last video, uh, if you had a million dollars and you, uh, you accumulated a million dollars, invested, saved, sold some property, sold some real estate, had a million dollars, or had a large sum of money, or you have a high income, let me say that. Some people do have actual very high incomes. Uh, they're paid, they have employers, and they make with bonuses sometimes uh, $500,000, $750,000, $800,000 a year. Uh, and after all the bills are paid, after the house was paid, uh, the kids' college fund is fully funded. The 401k is fully funded. Uh, the employer has matched uh, those funds completely and totally. Uh, after they've uh, uh, paid their taxes, uh, light, light bill, gas bill, water bill, phone bill, insurance, uh, they still have, let's say, half a million dollars left over. Uh, they have high incomes, uh, obviously, you know, pro athletes, but then executive CEOs, uh, people who have very high level positions uh, in corporate jobs. Uh, there are people who are consultants, uh, people, members of a firm who are employed by uh, county and consultant agencies who have very high incomes. And let's say you still have half a million to 800000 or a million dollars left over after taking care of everything. And you want to put it somewhere. And what a place you can put it is insurance companies say, hey, bring that money to us. Uh, we'll put it into a whole life variable universal life policy, whole insurance policy, life insurance policy, a whole life insurance policy. Guarantee you a rate of interest. Guarantee you 1%, 2%, 3% on your money. Uh, $30,000 a year is what your money is going to earn. After 20 years, you know, <laughs> your money's doubled. Um, after 26, 27 years, uh, your million dollars is now $2 million. And normally, uh, you're now re retired. You're now, it's 26 years later. You were 26 when you put the money in. You were 46 when you put it in. Now you're 72. And now you're mandatorily having to pull it out if you were using it for a time, which you didn't have to. But you're now 72. So now you're pulling the money out. And that million dollars has grown to two million. Normally, you're going to pay huge taxes, income taxes on that, on that increase of that million dollars. So you're going to walk away with only about six hundred thousand dollars normally, as opposed to one million in growth. In a whole life in a whole life insurance policy, that's not the case. It's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen with life insurance policy is you're going to pull it out tax free. You're not going to pay a dime in taxes. Nothing. Nada. Why? Because you're pulling that out, it's actually going to be a loan. That was the recap. You're actually borrowing your own money. If you don't pay the money back, the life insurance counsel, there's no death benefit. Uh, like I said, if this is a million dollar policy, you put a million dollars in, you got a million dollars worth of life insurance, you're not, your life insurance coverage is now zero. Um, it's a game of that you, you have to live because if you die in that 26 years, uh, the insurance company keeps that million dollars cash. They keep every dime of it. Your loved ones don't get a penny of it. Uh, they get the death benefit, whatever that is. And if you took any money out that was a loan, that money is going to be taken out of the death benefit, which, of course, guaranteed uh, the loan of your own money. Okay, yeah, crazy. But again, the reason why it exists is because of the possibility of putting huge sums of money away into a plan that guarantees you a set rate of return without any taxes whatsoever. So that's why a whole life insurance policy is great. Uh, so unless, so again, the recap, the, more, the lesson that story is whole life insurance is great if you got a million dollars. <laughs> if you don't have a million dollars, if you don't have a high income, okay, you have a wife and kids, then buy term investor difference is the way to go. Point blank, plain and simple. And, and I, have, I explain this to people, and that is that um, you don't have this huge millions of different options of what to do with your money, of how to. There's different ways you can invest your money. 
Uh, I recently signed up for, I'm on, I'm on Robin Hood. Um, okay, and I got Acorns, uh, Dr. Boris Watkins. He recommended both of those, uh, Robin Hood and Acorns. And I have uh, um, something else too. Uh, I have a cash app. And the cash app allows you to invest in Bitcoin. Uh, Robinhood allows you to invest in cryptocurrency and stocks. Okay. Uh, ETF, exchange traded funds. I picked some exchange traded funds. And Acorns allows you to, when you spend money, is rounded up and your, your penny, your, your spare change literally is put into investments. Uh, these are ways and these are ways in which you can do, uh, that small number of things. So you can invest in individual stocks. You can invest in mutual funds. Uh, you can put your money away into a CD at a bank certificate of deposit where they're going to get a very low rate of re return, but guaranteed. Uh, you can, if you have typically large amounts to deposit, you can put in annuity. I think most annuities start around $50,000 for an annuity. Uh, and that, and there's this limited universe. Uh, the bottom line, though, is all of it requires you to get one. You have to first start off. You must go through someone who's licensed. Uh, Robin Hood and Acorns, they kind of switch it up. They do something that they are licensed. They are members of FINRA and SIPC. Uh, so they do get some information from you uh, for that purpose to comply with those rules and regulations. Uh, and that's the change, that's the switch. Uh, but you're buying these things without any uh, professional advice from a human being. Uh, it's, it's boils down to how good the app is. Now, the, those apps, Robinhood, Acorns, uh, Cash App, um, you know, they don't come with, Cash App doesn't come with advice, you're just, you're just investing in Bitcoin. Uh, cryptocurrency is cryptocurrency, okay, all right. Um, we'll get into that later. Um, but, uh, acorns, there are different articles you can read, things of that nature, but in terms of, uh, flat foot advice, you don't get it. And which, what it, what that means is you, you, you have to put the work in to know what you're investing in. Elsewise, you're just investing blind. Uh, you're also not going to get the education or the strategy that you're trying to take, uh, or get, get educated, which is important. That and so there is a difference in having a person like me uh, to advise you what you do in the realm of insurance, uh, and, and that's my area. My specialty is insurance. What can insurance do for you? Why is insurance? You know, what is w w Peter? You focus on insurance, life insurance. What is it that life insurance can do for? Okay? for what is it special? What does it? Add, what is its added value? Glad you asked. <laughs> Okay, life insurance in and of itself is a financial instrument. And this one thing is that I, uh, I want to get to today. It's really important to know some differences and be educated on life insurance. And this, again, this is for people. I'm trying to attract people. My attraction marketing is attracting people who is who is serious. Um, people who are married, who, like I think I explained in a previous video, and I'll explain it quickly again. When you have... A financial interest in someone else's life for life, uh, for the life of that person and for your entire life. When you're married, you have children, you own a home, you have a mortgage, uh, 30 year or more mortgage. Uh, you both work, you both have jobs. Typically, you both uh, have gone through some sort of training. You're a, a over the road truck driver with different certification, hazmat certification, chemical certification. So you're, you know, you're making really good money as a truck driver. You are RN with a specialty. Uh, you're a registered nurse, ma'am. You're married to your husband who is a over the road hazmat truck driver who makes easily uh, mid to low six figures, one twenty to two hundred twenty thousand dollars a year driving uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, hydrogen gas uh, across country, across state lines, uh, with return trips, uh, loads, uh, and you're an RN with a specialty in anesthesiology. Okay, and you're making uh, eighty, ninety, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. You all are bringing in three hundred thousand dollars a year in your home, 
income. Uh, your children are going to go to college. You have children. They are going to go to college. That's, that's, that's without question. You're going to have to pay. They're not going to qualify for Pell Grants. <laughs> you don't want them to have to get loans. Uh, your kids go to private schools. Uh, you're educated. Your kids are going to be educated. Uh, a loss of income would be, you know, tremendous. Uh, uh, I talk about it changes the story of your children. Your children's stories change. Uh, they go, well, everything was great. Then my father died and we moved in with, you know, our, our grandmother, you know, uh, our aunt. Uh, we moved to Chicago. I started living with my uncle. I started living with my grandparents. You get these stories of people's lives when a breadwinner or an income earner in the family passes away unexpectedly. Um. When you when that is your situation, uh, life insurance is vital to protect. Uh, oh, but Peter, what, what if I live to be a hundred years old? You know, uh, well, great, glad you asked. What happens if you live to be a hundred years old? Uh, and so I don't use the life insurance. <laughs> uh, my kids are old. My great grandchildren are old. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm about to have my first great great grandchild. Uh, and huge amounts of life insurance is important. That's called the theory of decreasing responsibility. As you get older, you need less life insurance. When you're younger, you have to have it, uh, that life insurance, uh, because uh, that spouse, uh, the life is going to change for the children, for the spouse, and that expectation. Because I, I have to remind people this, when you're married, your expectation that you are going to stay married to death to your part, and that is going to include going through retirement. And what that means is that there's going to be a time period where you're expecting that your spouse is going to get a retirement check. They're going to get a Social Security check. They're going to get a 401k retirement. That's going to roll over, uh, hopefully, into one of my annuities and pay income for life, guaranteed. Regardless of how much you put in, you're going to still get a guaranteed check. So you literally can get paid more. Uh, on that guarantee, if you live to be 100, uh, you have an interest in that person even when they uh, retire and no longer working. That retirement check is what you're, you're looking for uh, as well. So you have a financial interest in someone else's life for life. Then, yes, you, you sit down with someone like me, a licensed person uh, specializing almost exclusively in life insurance, uh, buy term invested difference. Uh, and say, we need a plan that makes sure that things go the way we want to. And now you've asked, well, what if I live to be 100? Well, your need for life insurance goes down, which allows, which is why what we do in the business that I'm in is we have a custom advantage plan that allows us to uh, customize your term life insurance just for those step downs so that you decrease the amount of coverage as you get older, which means your monthly costs go down, which can be used those, which allows you to increase money for retirement over those time periods. As the you know, you go from you know half a million down to three hundred thousand, down to one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, uh, and that last, and we have a term that'll go thirty five years. So we'll give you, we'll customize you with a thirty five year term for 150,000, another 100,000 that'll go uh, 20 years, and then a 10-year or 15-year uh, policy for another hundred, $150,000 to round out the $500,000 total amount. But in those first 10 crucial years, depending on the age of your children, uh, those crucial years, uh, always making make sure there's enough money to pay off the house, pay off the mortgage. Uh, that mortgage account does decrease, so that's why we're decreasing the amount of your life insurance. But we want we got to be able to pay off that mortgage. We want that house paid for. We don't want a house note. So we, so that maintains the standard of living for the children. They don't have to leave the home. The home gets paid for. Okay, so that doesn't change. So the surviving spouse still lives in the home and they paid for home. And now there's no house note, which makes things financially easier because there's no mortgage to pay. That was being paid when there were two incomes, but now it's paid off. 
And so there is no mortgage. And the children get the biggest asset that can be uh, passed down to them, which is a uh, creates generational wealth, which again, Dr. Boyce Watkins talks about that in African-American community, especially, but in all communities, but especially the African-American community, how we missed out on the biggest determining factor of wealth, generational wealth, and that is a home, okay? Um, what, uh, what I have to explain to people now, when I'm gonna switch into more specifics, 15 minute mark into this video, um, is another specific feature of how life insurance is actually money. How is life insurance actually really and truly, it's, it's, it's cash, you've been paying for a premium uh, you know, for you know, you're 100 years old, for 36 years, it's 35 year term. Okay, I've been paying premium 35 years. You know what? You know what do I get back? Obviously, we do buy a term invested difference. So you're always going to be invested if you sit down with me. Uh, you got to have an investment going. The first thing you're always going to have is a mercy account. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing you have is a debt elimination plan, because all financial advice uh, centers around the simple principle that there's no need to even beginning a long-term investment uh, if you still got long-term debt. We got to get you out of debt. Well, I got a home mortgage. Okay, well, we're going to pay the house off. We're going to focus on paying the house off. And as we get and knock down that mortgage, we're going to increase the investment because we're not going to we're not going to have a 35-year mortgage and a 35-year investment plan. They're canceling out. We have to take that 35-year mortgage down to a, yeah, 20-year minimum. We got to get to, we would love doing in 10. We got to see if that's possible, but, but we got to get a plan to get you out of that mortgage. If it's a 35 year mortgage, get you down out in 20 uh, and get you a 30, have a 35 year life insurance plan, which obviously is going to come with an investment plan and pay off this mortgage. Uh, hopefully we want to get more, get you out of that mortgage in 10 years. Credit card debt, that's got to be done. That's, we got to kill that. Uh, car loans, we got to kill that. Uh, I show a strategy for you always pay cash for cars. Uh, I drive a cash car. Uh, it's an older car, but it's paid for. Okay, simple principle. Um, and uh, emergency account. So you first got to have an emergency account. Got to have uh, got to have build up. Got to have minimum five thousand dollars emergency account to begin with. Minimum, uh, and that's going to grow to the emergency account is going to be six months uh, worth of income put aside at least six months up to and now this is a the new where it's leaning towards we're seeing something new uh, in america uh is that the uh emergency cut the replacement it's not a replacement cap where it's got to be an account for three to five years worth of income okay i'm like okay so if you're out of work for three to five i hope no one's out of work for three to five years trying to find another job but six months is a minimum so we got to get this first five thousand dollars, which should be you know, half of you know one month. That's got to be done. You got to fund that first. Then we're gonna work up to six months worth of uh, income. Uh, uh, emergency fund, elimination of debt, uh, college fund, okay, which is a shorter term, and then a long range investment for uh, retirement. Start looking at that. All that in conjunction with the previous. Uh, we look at trying to save you money on other forms of insurance, like auto and home. Uh, we try to look at that, where you can save money, things of that nature. And we also look at other ways you can increase income into your life. Uh, that's always very important. How can you increase and bring income into your life? We look at those things. Okay. Um, how is life insurance money? Well, okay. Uh, now they're running the commercials. The companies are hitting up the baby boomers. And the, the commercial comes on and asks, do you have a life insurance policy you don't need anymore? <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that one. Do you have a life insurance policy? You know, and it shows the elderly couple. They're gorgeous. You know, there's beautiful. I mean, that everyone wants to look like these two people, elderly people in this commercial. Um, you know, they are just simply stunning examples of old age. Um and the question comes across the the television, uh, do you have a life insurance policy you don't need anymore? And they'll they'll buy your life insurance policy. In other words, they'll give you cash in exchange for a life insurance policy. Well, if you haven't guessed that what this simply is, is exactly what it sounds like, uh, is that you have a life insurance policy. Typically they'll say a whole life, but they'll say on the commercial, they say even if it's term, they'll buy your policy. And what they do is they're taking a bet that you're gonna die sooner. 
That's literally, I mean, that's what it is. It's a bet. It's it's a gamble that they have an underwriting department that literally comes in and says, uh, whatever amount, we're, we're going to give them money. Okay, whatever the amount of life insurance policy, that's not the issue. The issue is, are you going to die sooner? That's what, that's, that's what they're trying to figure out. You're obviously taking the bet that you're going to live longer. Okay, that's what it's about. You're willing to exchange your life insurance policy for their cash um, because you're betting that, okay, you're going to live longer. You know, you're going to live to be 100. They're betting you're going to live to be, you're going to retire 65 and die at 72. Uh, <laughs> that's what they're betting. That's what they're banking on. That That's their play. And they're going to get the life insurance that, that they're going to give you $20,000 in exchange for your $100,000 life insurance policy. And that works for them if you live, especially if you die, you know, six months after. You know, you get their $20,000, like, wonderful, wow, you know. Uh, but if you live to be 101, then they've lost because, wow, they gave you that time, the time value of money uh, means they gave you 20. And they, they, they waited, you know, 40 years to get their $100,000. And the reason why that is a problem is because they had to pay those monthly insurance premiums. They had to keep those insurance premiums up for that 40 years. Uh, that's how, and that's how that works. They're going to pay the monthly premiums. You get older, the, the premiums get higher. They're paying those premiums. Banking on you dying sooner and them not having to keep paying. And then there's a point where they're going to let the policy lapse where they really, oh God, okay, you, you live to be 89. Okay. All right. Tell you what, we, we, we're losing money at this point. We're letting this policy lapse. That's what that is. So that, but that is one way in which, you know, life insurance is cash. But let me explain this to you. It's all about what kind of life insurance you're getting. And that's where every term insurance policy is not the same. Uh, the term insurance policy that I offer, uh, the company that I'm with, is not the cheapest because it's a different quality. It's a different type of life insurance. It's the life insurance that I'm explaining is cash. Uh, there is a living death benefit, a living benefit. I'm sorry, a living, living death benefit. Wow. Okay. There is a li living benefit option, meaning you get diagnosed with a, a terminal illness. Uh, doctor says you have six months or less to live. Uh, he puts that in writing. You can, um, get, uh, up to, and we have one of the highest rates up to 70, 75% advanced to you of your life insurance still leaving some life insurance, you know, a, a death benefit for your loved ones, but giving you cash before you die. Okay. Um, so, in the, so you've been paying premiums. Okay. Monthly premiums, but now you've got some, some cash, which, which, which you have to understand this. You may not have paid that much money. In other words, your premiums may be a hundred dollars a month. You've had the policy, for 20 years, okay? So that's $1,200 a year, 20, you know, 24,000. But you may, but you have a $300,000 life insurance policy. Okay? Follow me now. Listen to me. I, I, I want to say this one more time. Do the math on this. Everyone get your pens and paper out. Okay? This is how life insurance is money. You can have a living death benefit. Now, of course, this is if, you know, you get this diagnosis. Okay, I'll start off with that. I don't want anyone to get too excited. But if that happens, if that unfortunately event happened, you got diagnosed, you got you got told you have cancer, and you, okay? And you have, and, and because one of the biggest things I say about people, especially people in my community, African-American community, is we don't all die instantly. We don't all just drop dead. We get real sick, you know? And we get to a point, we get cancer, we get breast cancer, we get colon cancer, we get on dialysis, okay? Um, the isms, the diabetes, you know, high blood pressure, asthma, and everything that, you know, African-American people get. And then at some point, uh, the doctor steps in and says, look, you know, there's nothing, we tried everything, there's nothing else we can do, six months to live. You may have put in... Uh, $1,200 a year, 20 years, uh, 2400 uh, you may, you've put $24,000 into this policy. What you've paid for the past 20 years, $100 a month, you put in $24,000 into this policy, what you've put into it. You have a $300,000 life insurance policy. 
Okay, seventy percent is two hundred ten thousand. You put in twenty four thousand, we will cut. They will cut you a check for two hundred and ten thousand. What's to understand? Life insurance is money. If, of course, these events happen in life, and so what are you insuring? You're insuring your ability to earn income. That is important. That is something that some people will consider. But there is one thing that I, I forget who said it, but there's a quote that basically goes along the line. I'm totally paraphrasing it, that it is harder for us as human beings to see as real anything that we can put off even one day. If you tell me, well, there's a possibility that something happened to you that I mean, we all know we're going to die, but not today, not in the next five minutes. You know, there's there's no one with a gun to your head right now saying, I'm going to give you a chance to say, make your final prayers. I'm going to kill you. You know, if you if if we, it's harder to see as real anything that you can put off one day, um, and that's and that's just, and that's why life is sure it, it's not it's you can't see it as being real. You can't see that as being money when you sign this policy. It is a benefit that you understand in terms of planning for the ifs in life. If I get sick, if I get a diagnosis, if I have a massive stroke, um, and I'm in NCU. And, and I'm in the ICU uh, and I come back around, okay? And I have a beneficiary or a spouse that's still alive, that's also on the policy. The doctor come and say, you know, hey, you know, it doesn't look good. Uh, he writes the letter, you send it off to, well, there's a form that the doctor signs that goes to the insurance company and you can collect 70% of your death benefit while you're still alive. Still leave another 30% that when you do uh, go home to your Lord, your maker, go home to glory, uh, that go that death benefit goes to uh, your, your loved one, your beneficiary. That is the way in which uh, life insurance is actual money. It is a financial instrument that does constitute money. And what real life insurance is about is that you put you pay less in than what's going to be paid out. And that's just the interesting thing about life insurance, that you're going to simply pay less into it and what's going to be paid out in, in any policy that uh, I'm going to sell or issue. You know, um, I don't do $15 a month policies. Uh, that I leave that for what I call the pork chop life insurance people. The people come knock on your door, go up and down through the neighborhood. Uh, we know these companies, uh, you know, grandmama had that policy on a nail, hanging up in the living room over that old kerosene lamp. Uh, they do that. I, I had a lady uh, doing her uh, legal protection plan, getting a will done. I had a lady, um, she had a, a life insurance policy, death insurance, burial insurance policy. Uh, $8 a month, got her $800 worth of coverage. 15, she had another one for $15 a month, giving her $1,500 in death benefit. She bought the policy in 1972. We were celebrating. She was getting the will done because she was about to celebrate her 100th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, she paid a lot more on that policy than $800. Yeah. Anyway, um, the policy that I provide for people are going to pay. If, if you're putting $100 a month in, you're going to get, you know, more than that. You're not never going to pay more into it. We don't we don't have a policy. We don't have a plan like that. Uh, the term would be lower, but you would never you can never buy a policy a term life insurance policy. We're going to pay more into it. Uh, it's called that's called being expensive, and that's important to understand uh, about this concept. Uh, another feature of the policy that provides something called in, in, increasing benefit rider. This is very important to people understand, and I'll make this the final point. An increasing benefit rider works like this. You get a $300,000 policy. It has an increasing benefit rider, increases by roughly, let's say, around 10% per year. Let's say you have a 35 year term. Uh, that 10% year is going to increase until it gets to right about $600,000. It's going to double uh, the coverage amount. I mean, your death benefit is going to just about double. So it increases up. Uh, before before you get to the 30, end of the 35 year term, or right up, or maybe right there about. Uh, and so now you have $600,000 worth of coverage. And, and the premiums increase, but it's going up just a little bit uh, you know, because you know, you're not having to do underwriting every year. You've got the increase in benefit rights, so you don't have to submit you know, uh, to any more health exams or answer any more health questions, but you can get 
get and be offered and buy 10% more coverage every year. Okay. And that's important because our health changes over the years. So you're making a play of that to ensure against the possibility that your health may change over the you know, 20, 30 year, 35 year term of the life insurance policy. So now your, your life insurance has doubled in the amount. The premium has gone up, not immensely, but you were paying a hundred dollars a month. Now you're paying 180. Okay. All right, so you, so you get to the end of the term. It's a 35-year term, great. You got $600,000 life insurance, but now the term's about to end. Okay. Well, the beautiful thing about the priest and benefit rider provision is this. Now what you can do is you can choose now that your term has ended at end of term. You can say, well, I want to keep some life insurance coverage. But now at this age, 35 years later, this life insurance at, th at $600,000 yeah, it's going to cost me $1,000 a month, and it's going to go up every year to $2,000, $1,000, $1,200, $1,100, $1,200, 1300 every month for $600,000 life insurance. Plus, I don't need as much life insurance. So what happens now is it starts going back down. So you $600,000 to $580,000, 580 to five sixty, to five fifty. dollars It keeps going down, but your premium stays the same. You're, you're still paying exactly the same amount every month. You're still paying the one eighty a month, but your coverage amount is coming down all the way to age 95, okay, so that you have life insurance. So there's literally going to be a point where you're going to be in your 80s because because we're actually helping you bet that you'll live a long time. And you you may very well have $300,000, $400,000 worth of life insurance for $180 a month and you're 80 years old, and that's going to be unheard of. And no one does that. No one does that. And again, remember what I told you about the Definitely. But that, of course, that's up to a certain age that ends that, you know, that, you know, you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to claim that at age 90 and say, oh, okay, you know, we're going to six months to live. Well, you know, but anyway, um, but that's now you can see where, okay, this is money because again, it's a, there's one thing that's guaranteed. We're all going to live here. We're all going to die. D-I-E. Something you're not supposed to say in a, in a, presentation with a potential client as supposed to be a third rail word, but that's something that's going to happen. We're all going to die. That is going to happen. And so, uh, being able to leave money to your family, uh, means you can guarantee your family money, generational wealth. Now I'm going to finish on this. I'm going to see if I can get this in, in the next three, four minutes. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, and uh, I can maybe do the numbers later, you know, write it all the way out. But let's say you have a $300,000 life insurance policy. Okay. You can take, let me be real quick with this. You can take, ten, you you have a wheel, of course, because you sit down with me. I'm going to show you how you can walk, have a wheel uh, as well. You got $300 life insurance, you don't need a wheel. Okay. I'm trying to get you to invest, that, be, be financially independent. You have a million plus dollars, money making money for you uh, to live off of. Uh, you're going to need a wheel. Okay. All right. So you decide in your will, you say you want to trust. You tell the law firm, you know, I want to trust set up. Why, why do you want to trust? Well, I want to trust that's going to buy a, buy an annuity. I want to take fifty thousand dollars of this three hundred, put it put it into this trust, and it's going to get an annuity, and it's going to be a foundational trust, uh, which you know, you know, it, it can be done, it can be set up, and this money system is new in this annuity, and let's say you get a. a an average rate is not, you don't get a guarantee rate, but you put it into a fixed index annuity that um, S&P 500 is average 7% um, after inflation. After inflation, that's what it's average. A after, and meaning seven, true, true 7%, meaning it's not been uh, affected by, after inflation is accounted for, your return on your money is 7%. Uh, let's round that down to 6%. Uh, with the rule of 72, uh, this $50,000 sits, just to make a long story short, you can have over a hundred years, at the end of a hundred years, you're going to have about $800 million off this $50,000 from your life insurance policy. And let's say it's in a trust for your family, for the stewards. You'll be long gone. It'll be a hundred years. You would have been, been dead a hundred years. Um, and your descendants will know your name. There'll be pictures of you. They'll have family reunions. 
of you because this trust, you can program it, if you would, in, in, in your will, have it, have it set up. It's like the, the amount of money to get this done is like an extra 50 bucks. Um, and say, as the trust builds up X amount of dollars, it's going, it's got to pay out, let's say eventually it's going to pay out 10% a year. And at $800 million, you know, 10% a year, <laughs> dispersed amongst your descendants, everybody going to college, you know, they're going to remember your name. They're going to know who you are. Uh, there'll be pictures of you. you they'll have family unions. Uh, there'll be land. Uh, you can have a, a, you can buy, um, uh, there's a Jewish camp out in Utica, Mississippi. Uh, you can have one of those built and that family members and people in the community will always be able to come and enjoy the Schomburg Center, the Johnson Center. You'll be long gone, but the legacy, so it's about legacy. That That's what life insurance can do, and that's what it does. All right, thanks for listening. Check it out, uh, p3jd.com. Uh, that's the website that is under development. You can hit me up in my email, pete3jd at gmail.com. That's P-E-T-E, -E, the number three, J as in John, D as in dog, at gmail.com. Let me know if you just want to talk. Thanks. Bye-bye.